Okay, so day one in person of the class is that we're going to start to look at the basics of Adobe Animate. Now, I had sent emails over the weekend on a variety of topics, and one of them was to remind you about um, having an Adobe ID. Nowadays, to use the software, you need an Adobe ID. Um, when you're on campus, to my knowledge, when you're on campus, you will be able to use the software for free um, with, your, with your Adobe ID. Um, at home, you would need to um, buy the subscription, but I'm just going to assume that, you know, in class, in person, you, you get it all to work. Um, and if you're having trouble on your own home computer and such, we, we can be in touch and we can try to figure it out. But for the moment, uh, go to the Start menu and let's start Adobe Animate if you haven't done so yet. So click on Start and then click on Adobe Animate 2020. Now, when it first loads up, it may ask you for a, um, a login number or not. It may ask you to log in with your ID and such. So uh, I think I've already logged in on mine. Whoops. But on yours, it should pop up and ask you to log in. Um, try to log in either with the Adobe ID that you created or uh, click on the Google login. And that Google login will just ask you to log in with your Southwestern College ID. So your Southwestern College email is related to your Google account. So either one of those ways, log into it, and then we'll proceed. Anyone having any trouble? So when it asks you, are you new to animate? Just click no for the moment. You can watch that little video a little bit later. <laughs> So we'll just go ahead and log in on that. Anyone having any trouble? Yes. Can we use our own personal Adobe account? Or should we create like an academic account? We, um, if you try to log in just with your, um, with your, uh, with your college's email via the Google login, I think they will just let you in. in the software, anyone having trouble? The first couple of times it might be a little bit weird because where do I log in with my personal, my school one, um, whatever way you're able to log in, we'll get you in, and then we will proceed. Now, I'm not sure what bug is going on in this room, but does everyone just get kind of like a blank screen like that? Yeah. Yeah, there's some bug that when we installed the software, this happens. And it's like, what am I even looking at? When you install the software on your own computer, uh, it should pop up with like a welcome message and templates and all this stuff. I guess just, you know, we get an ad, I guess. Uh, but besides that, the screen's kind of empty. That's, that's weird. I don't have an answer for that, but no problem. Let's go to the file menu, new. File menu, new. So, in other software like Microsoft Word, you start the software and then you have, a, you have a piece of paper to write on very, very easily. Here in, the, um, in this software, we have a bunch of like little templates, like what, what do we want to create? And at the top, I can see here character animation, a project for social media, a game, etc. So we have all of these like templates. And these get you started with a certain dimension and frame rate and things that we'll talk about in detail. Here's a way for me to you know, create a project for, um, for an Android phone and such. But let's go like this. Let's go to advanced. On the top right corner, go to the advanced one, and the default is HTML5 canvas, 
and the dimensions are whatever, and the frame rate is whatever. Just click create. Advanced HTML5 canvas. So then we get here the best thing and the worst thing ever, an empty screen. It's the best thing ever because it's like I can create anything here, a game, uh, a cool character, an animation, but it's the worst thing about where do I even start? So we've got a brand new document. Let's uh, save it. File, save as. How many of you brought a flash drive, a USB flash drive today? If you did, plug it in. If you didn't, don't worry about it. If uh, today's work, if you don't take it with you, it's OK. But uh, if you brought a drive, plug it in down at the bottom, and we'll save this question. Can we also use our Google Yeah, you can use the Google Drive. You can use OneDrive or any cloud storage, yeah. So you could also maybe sign into OneDrive if you've got a Microsoft OneDrive account or Google Drive or whatever. But let's save this file. Let's save this file uh, into a folder called Day One. And you can also call the file just Day One. All right, so did everyone save their file, day one? I'm just putting it in a folder. I'm putting it in a folder called day one, and I'm calling it day one. So that's what will be. Now, I do want to note, during the lecture, I do ask that unless you're helping someone to please keep it down. If you are helping someone else, I appreciate that, but also do that at a reasonable volume. If you're getting help from our tutors as well, Keep it at a reasonable volume, please, because while you're getting help, someone else may be getting distracted. Question. Will the format always be a Yes. Right now, when we're trying to save this particular file, you might have noticed that this is saving as an FLA. This is our, our, our type of file, so that that is normal and correct. OK, so I'm going to save that. Now, uh, one thing we want to do here, perhaps, um, let me just look at someone else's shoulder over here. It's the same. This interface might be styled or customized in different ways, depending on what you're trying to accomplish. So one of the things you, I'm, I'm going to try to remember to do this every time we come in, so that we're all looking at the same thing. Let's do this. Go up to the Window menu. And then at the very bottom, we have something called workspaces. We have different layouts for the software. This is under the window menu. My, my window is going to kind of crop things out sometimes. Sorry about that. But on the window menu, we have workspace. Uh, let's change this over to essentials. We have these other ones like animator and designer, developer, etc. Let's just go to essentials. So maybe a few panels appear, or other icons appear and such, but right now we're in the essentials. And down at the bottom, we have this panel called the timeline panel. This is where every single frame of our animation or game uh, will will happen. So right now, mine displays here, layer one, and then a bunch of frames. This is another thing that might be different uh, when you come in, because when you turn these computers off, they all reset back to factory settings. And the factory settings were those other views that you might not want. So when we come in, we're going to need to change to Window, Workspace, Essentials. And I also recommend here, 
On this timeline panel, there's a little menu right here. Click on that menu. It's like little lines on the timeline panel. Little lines. And select uh, standard. If it's not selected there on standard, click on standard. Now, I think that once you log in with your account, I think these settings will, will be remembered. Um, Angie, do you know if that happens? If you come back in and out with their account, does all these settings get saved in their login account? Uh, I don't think so. It depends on if they have the, um, the I guess, the online storage with the paid. Oh, OK. OK, so we might have to do this every time we come in. And I'll remind us when we come in next time again. But let's change this to the standard view. And right here, then we get this. And what we're going to do is uh, we're going to draw a happy face. And I haven't told you what tool to use for the drawing. Which one do you think? We've got these tools on the side. Which one do you think will let me draw a happy face here? We have something called a classic brush tool. Notice if you hover your mouse over it, classic brush tool. And then this one that looks like a pencil, pencil tool. So with either one, but I'm going to click the brush. And I'm going to draw a happy face. He's extremely happy. So OK, brush tool. I did that on Microsoft Paint. Well. This software is way more advanced. It lets you do animation and games and websites. And if you make mistakes, it lets you take back the mistake. How do you think you take back a mistake? Control Z. So up on the menu, you have Edit, Undo, or Control Z. Well, this, this is pretty basic stuff. Like every software has this. You can undo it. Control Z, and every time you Control Z, you go back. If you want to redo it, not a lot of other software has this, but if you want to redo it, let's say you drew something, you deleted it, whoops, actually, I didn't want to delete it. You can redo it. This has a keyboard shortcut. What do you think the keyboard shortcut is? Control Y. Control Y. How do you know that? Because <laughs> it says right there, exactly. There's so many tools, there's so many menus, and most of the time there's some sort of keyboard shortcut. You, when you get advanced, you've got to memorize these shortcuts. You're going to waste your time moving your hand to the mouse, and then moving the mouse to the menu, and then clicking undo, and then whoops, move my hand back. You've got to remember these keyboard shortcuts. On Canvas, I have a link to all the keyboard shortcuts. And there's going to be a quiz on them tomorrow. Just kidding. We don't have class tomorrow, right? We're only here on Mondays. We're only here on Mondays. So the keyboard shortcuts, I highly recommend you look at that link on Canvas to memorize them. Because you're going to see me when I get more advanced. I'm going to switch to the brush tool. I'm going to switch to the move tool. I'm going to go to the circle over here and do all this stuff so fast. Obviously, I'm not going to do that in the beginning yet. I want you to learn the software, but you're going to need to remember how to switch between these tools easily. So I've got a face. Now, what I want to do here is I've drawn something, and I, I want to give it a little hat. I want to draw a hat. Well, here's where, before we draw the hat, here's where the power of digital uh, imaging software comes in. In the real world, I could draw a face right here, and then I could add a hat on a separate piece of paper. I could draw on this other paper here a hat. It's got a hat on a separate piece of paper. We can do that digitally as well, and that way it's called layers. So right now, I've got layer one with my face. I want to add a new layer for the hat. How do you think we add a new layer? From where? <laughs> That's right. There's a little icon right there, new layer. So 
So in your timeline right here, click new layer. Add a new layer. So I have layer one, layer two. You can have as many layers as you want, as many layers as you need, as many layers as your computer has memory. So you can crash your computer with too many layers, too many drawings, etc. But that's usually a lot. So we've got layer one, layer two. I can easily keep track of um, these two layers in the real world because they're physically two separate things. Okay, that's easy. Um, and I know that if I'm going to add more to the hat over here, it's on a separate it's on a separate layer, so I can easily make a change. Um, the problem digitally is that how do I know which layer I'm working on right now? It's highlighted. So I'm on layer one. I'm on layer two. So you need to be aware of this now. Which layer am I on? Because even if I'm in the wrong layer, I can still draw the hat. But I drew it on the wrong layer. So be aware that we have these layers now to deal with when we get advanced. And some of these animations that you saw earlier, they had like 20 layers. So you have to keep track of what's on what layer for what gets animated, what moves around in the right way. Now, I don't want to accidentally draw on the wrong layer, so we have a way to lock a layer. See how we have these columns? This one, this one, this one, this one, this one. We have this lock. If I want to lock layer one, I click on the empty spot on the layer. See how if you hover your mouse over there, you get the icons appearing there. So it's a good idea to lock the layers you're not working on just in case for you not to do something that you weren't expecting. So lock your layer one. And then on layer two, draw the hat. He's going to have a pilgrim hat. Now, I just drew something on a separate layer. Let me undo something for a moment. This is very subtle here. Uh, I have layer one, layer two. That's how my layers look right there. And then when I draw something on a layer, do you see that the icon there changes? When I had nothing on a layer, it looked like that, a certain shade of gray, but more importantly, like a little hollow, a little white dot. There's nothing in that layer. So even if I don't show you up here, you can tell down here, this layer has nothing, this layer has something. And as soon as I draw something on a layer, it fills in. So I've got something in each of those layers. So this happens all the time, especially as a beginner, that you know you have multiple layers and I drew the hat up here, but nope, I drew it in the wrong place. I have layer one, layer two, but I drew the second thing on the wrong place. There's nothing in that layer. These are these nuances that you'll you'll get used to, that you'll memorize, that you'll need to memorize in order to do the advanced stuff. Again, all of those people's work from, the, from last semester that took one semester of 125 and then one semester of 126, and they, and they did that and they go beyond. And right now we're drawing happy faces, barely. So no, no problem. We have the time. We have the 16 weeks to learn all of this stuff. The big idea of part one is a lot of the basics. There's so many panels, so many windows. What does this mean over here? What is that? I'm going to do Excel spreadsheets here. What is even this icon? So. Uh, we just got a lot to learn at the beginning, so if you already have some experience in the software, this might be, this might be like, I already know this, it's a little slow, but for 95% of the class or higher, this is brand new. And so we do have to kind of go slow at the beginning, and then we'll go, we'll get rolling pretty well.
Now, let's say we drew that hat, but it's not in the right place. I don't want it to be on the back of his head. I want it to be on the top of his head. I want to move what I drew. I used a certain tool to draw. We have a certain tool to move. You see the very first tool at the top here, selection tool. And that has a, a little keyboard shortcut. Do you see that? When you hover over these tools, they often have something in parenthesis, a little letter V. Keyboard shortcut for a tool, because if I press the letter V as in Victor, I can activate that tool. And I press the letter B as in boy, I can activate the other tool. So just on the keyboard, without even clicking the tool, that's something to start memorizing. B to draw with the brush, and then V to move the thing. But when you try to move the hat, huh? I'm trying to move the hat, and it's it's acting weird. I'm pressing on it, and I'm trying to move it. Are you getting the same thing? Clicking and dragging, and something like that? <laughs> well, this is normal, because the, the drawing that we have here, these lines, the software sees it as more than just a line. If I zoom in right here, watch this. If I zoom in, I'll show you how to zoom in in a moment. If I zoom in really, really close, that one line has two edges, this edge and that edge. So when I'm zoomed out, when I'm looking at it in a larger way like this, OK, it's just a line. If I try to move it, something weird might happen like that. And I grab this edge and I try to move it like that, I'm moving an edge of the line. I'm moving this edge. It could be to do an effect like a shadow, sure. It's just that on the technical level, what's happening is that I'm moving the edges of the line. OK, well, I don't know if it shows up right on the projector, but if you click on it one time, it's not too obvious on my projector, but when you click on it one time, you see like a little dotted pattern on it. Now the whole thing is selected. And when I move that, the whole thing moves. So this is another thing uh, to get used to with this software. You click one time to select it, and then you can actually move it. If you, if you, ha if you noticed when I got close to an edge, the icon changed. It might either be like a little right angle, or it might be a curve. It just depends on where on the drawing you have your mouse on. So this is saying you're about to move the edge, you're about to move the curve of your line. And on some places where there's like a corner, you might see the little corner icon. So all you really need to know for the moment is if you click one time on what you drew, that selects it, and then you can move it. If you don't click on it and you try to move it, you'll probably get something weird. Now look at this. I'm moving it around without the mouse. How am I doing that? Telekinesis? <laughs> I'm moving it with the arrow keys. So on the keyboard with the arrow keys, I can move it to the exact perfect position. If you hold down Shift plus the arrow keys, then it moves faster. So one pixel at a time with just the arrow keys. Holding Shift, arrow keys, like 10 or 20 pixels at a time. So I want to move the hat. I want to move the hat, but also I want to rotate it or place it properly. I drew it in a certain way that looks OK if it was on the right side of his head. But then if I try to put it on the left side of the head, uh, that, that doesn't look right. I want to rotate it. 
The second tool is all about that, about transforming what you drew. So the first tool is the move tool or the selection tool technically. I still think about it in the old name. I've been using I've been using this software since like 2004. That's a little while ago now that I think about it. And in the beginning it was called the move tool. And I still think about it that way. I guess that's why it still has a shortcut V as in move. But this is a selection tool. Next to it free transform tool. I don't know why they chose the letter Q, but Q is the quick transform tool, let's say. Q is the shortcut to quickly transform it. Because now what I can do with the free transform, you know, free transform, click on it, and then I can rotate it. I can go to one of these corners and rotate it. Or I can grab an edge and make it stretched out or squashed. So play with that free transform tool for a moment. You click on the thing, you switch to the free transform, and then you can rotate it and move it and all that good stuff. Okay, so right now what I've drawn is a face with a hat. The hat is transparent. I wanted to draw some sort of, you know, uh, hat. And it's not made out of plastic, so it shouldn't be transparent. I want to fill in the color. Um, do you see any tool on the side here that might be about filling in a color? Yes. Paint bucket. Paint bucket, exactly. Paint bucket tool, K. Letter K for bucket. Paint bucket. Um, right now I've been drawing with, with a red color. You probably have as well. Uh, but I want a different color. I don't want to stay only with red lines. I want something else. So um, if you click on the bucket, have you been noticing that this panel over here has been changing based on the different tools you've had selected? When I was on the select tool, I had these bunch of options in properties panel. When I had the brush tool, I had all of these properties. And now in the bucket, I have these. So I'm going to change the color. I don't want to fill it with the same red color. I want a different color, just to see what happens. So click on that fill. You get a bunch of colors here. Pick any one of these colors. We'll talk about mixing colors and so forth later. But um, pick any color. I'm going to go with blue. And then I'll click to fill it in. Now, when you tried to fill in your hat, how many of you did it not fill in? So if it didn't fill in, maybe something like this happened. I'm trying to fill in the paint bucket color here, and it doesn't let me. Because in my case, because in my case, uh, my drawing is not finished. There's a gap. I'm trying to drop in a color, and there's a gap. So make sure that all of the edges of your drawing are filled in, and then you can uh, fill in the color. OK, so I drew this hat, and it's a couple of colors. It's no longer transparent. On the edges, I have this red color, and on the inside, I have the blue color. 
I want to move the hat again. Try to move the hat again. Get the selection tool and try to move that hat again. In. Let's see what happens. So if I go back to the selection tool and I click on it and try to move it, All right, everyone, I think it's getting a little noisy, especially on this side over here. Remember, if you need a little help, you can ask in a reasonable volume, but it's getting a little distracting, please. So I tried to move the hat, and I only moved the inside color. So this is made out of two separate pieces the inside color and that outside color. I want to move both, so I need to select both. This particular drawing is made out of an inside shape and an outside shape. So you need to click on one shape and then hold shift on the keyboard and click on the other shape and they will both get selected and then they can both be moved. So I'm going to click on the inside shape. I'm going to hold shift on the keyboard. And the other part is selected. And then I can move everything. And I can free transform it and all of that. So the purpose at the moment, before I get into the, the real book, is just to get acclimated with a couple of things. There's this software with a bunch of tools, there's these concepts of layers, there's the right tool for the right task, um, and uh, we're just kind of playing with it and we haven't even looked at these other panels yet, what are these settings? How do we animate it? We'll get to that very, very soon. But what I want to do is this. Um, like I said, this class is not just going to be a lot of, you know, watch me do it. You're going to need to do things too. So here's the first sort of example of that. Uh, I want you to lock both of your layers here. Lock both of your, your layers here. Um, and then notice there's like a little, what would you describe this icon as? Don't click on it yet, but what do you think that icon is? Visible or not visible? It's an eyeball, which makes it visible or not visible. Yes. So let's hide. OK, once again, everyone on this side of the room, you're kind of being very noisy. I know you're getting help. Angie, I know you're getting help but we're distracting the whole class. So please, at a lower volume, can you give the help, everyone, please? So here, the uh, eyeball, when you click on these, it hides the layer. What I'd like you to do at this point is hide both layers, make a new layer, and then draw your favorite childhood cartoon character and then call me over for me to see it. So I'm going to give you a few minutes. With all, this, with all the tools you've learned so far, draw your favorite childhood cartoon character. Raise your hand and call me over. I want to see it. Yeah, we locked a layer we, and we hid our layers, so that means we have to use a new layer. So go ahead and draw your favorite cartoon character. Raise your hand, call me over, I want to see it. Thank you. 
How are you doing? Are you able to draw your favorite childhood character on other than that? That's fun. Of course. <laughs> what about yourself?
So if you didn't get a chance to show me, that's okay. I've been wandering around, and I see people creating some interesting things. Um, a lot of talented people that I see so far. Well, you would probably be able to draw your character a lot easier if you weren't doing it with this horrible mouse, right? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I should have given you one of these, actually, and then you might have been able to do it a lot better. So, you have a whole class set of these Wacom tablets that I will be checking out during class. Um, how much did it cost? It's just like $300. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like to give all the things. So, we were. Uh, okay, guys over here. So, the mouse was a little hard to use, definitely for digital imaging. We have a whole class set of these that we will start to use soon enough. But right now, it was just an activity for you to do a little bit of this drawing. And when we get to the point here, we're going to use these Wacom tablets. If you've got your own, you can bring it and plug it in, too. And there are a variety of sizes and prizes, you know, I mean, prices. Uh, we splurged on these big ones, and I think they're like $300 or something. But there's a lot of other ones for like $70, $50, whatever. Check, uh, check Fry's, Best Buy, Amazon, whatever. And eventually, we're going to use these, and these are going to be way better than an actual mouse, and they're pressure sensitive, so you press harder, the line is thicker, and so forth. Question? I did recently purchase, they're a lot smaller, yes. but um, it's an Adobe, uh, not Adobe, Wacom. Uh, it's a Wacom tablet, and it's like 82 bucks, yeah. so it's not like hundreds of dollars. Yeah. yeah. Some of the really advanced ones actually show your screen so, uh, right on the tablet. So as long as you have the ability to draw on it, yeah, you can bring your own if you'd like. We've got a whole class set of them to check them out. We've got a whole class set of them that we will start checking out eventually. And the way you'll do that is you'll, uh, you'll need to check it out by uh, providing your student ID. I can only check them out during class and lab time. You cannot take them home with you, but this is something that eventually you will use. And definitely in the advanced version of the class, this is very, very useful because it's hard to draw with that mouse. The mouse lets you do great things except drawing. So we'll get to these tablets later. Uh, what we want to do at the moment, whatever you've drawn at the moment, if you haven't been doing something important, what if the power goes out? What are we missing? Um, saving. We haven't been saving, perhaps? So you want to click File Save. There, there is an Auto Save. So let me show you where Auto Save is at. Right now, Auto Save is set for 10 minutes. So if the power goes out nine minutes after you started something, you're going to lose everything. So for whatever reason, this is set to 10 minutes. You might want to set it lower, although you don't really want to set it to like one minute or 10 seconds or whatever, because it's going to be saving and saving constantly to your disk, actually slowing you down. So I would recommend, what, like two minutes? Something like that? But be it could also be the cause of a crash, too. Yeah. Yeah. So... Um. Yeah, it, that can happen, especially if you're trying to do something um, intense. Like, say you're trying to convert a, a a photo that you brought in, and then you're trying to like uh, turn it into like a like a, a poster or, or like a paint poster kind of thing, cartoonish. Um, the computer's using resources to try and convert that. It's math, but if you're if the Odyssey kicks in at the same time, it'll stress out and can cause a crash. So they set it for 10 minutes, which I think is too long, but I would not set it to like one minute. Let me show you where you can set this. You can decide what value you want. 
let's uh, first of all do a regular save, file save, or control S. The cool thing about these tablets that we have, you, you actually also have these extra buttons on the side that you can program. So maybe right next to it, you've got the save button right away. You're drawing, and then you press save right on the button. You can customize these things. These are really cool. Let's save it, control S. And then we'll go up to the edit menu at the bottom, preferences, and we'll go to the first one, edit preferences. Edit menu, preferences, edit preferences. There's lots of settings with a lot of panels that you don't have to really worry about at the moment, but right at the top here, this is right there, 10 minutes. So I'm going to put mine at five minutes. Whatever you'd like. And then click OK. All of these other settings, you don't really have to worry about them. They're more advanced than we need them at the moment. And then click OK at the bottom. to customize. Where? You I think? think? It's set to dark. Oh, yeah, right there, dark. Yeah. But some students might need the light setting. Oh, okay. Let's mention. Dark is better on the screen. Light can be up to that. Yeah. Let's, uh, actually, let me mention one more thing there in the, in those options that might be useful. Uh, if you go back to edit preferences, you have right here the option to change the user interface theme. Right now it's on the dark theme. It's on the dark theme at the moment, and you can change it to these other ones, like a light theme, and then everything becomes bright. Maybe. It's better. For accessibility purposes, that's a good thing to know where it is at. So right now in the dark room, this might be too bright under the light, but when the lights are on, you know, you can decide what you'd like. Okay, so um, this is our masterpiece at the moment so far. Um, let's take one more break, and when we come back from the break, I'm going to go through a lesson in the book. Um, to talk about more aspects of using the software, which will tie directly into the first assignment. So it's uh, 240. We'll take a break until 250. And at 250, we'll get started on a real lesson. Right now, you can practice the software if you want. Take a break. We'll be back at 250.